Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. No doubt you're here to learn everything you can about Maui and how it works. Today I've invited Jonathan Peppers from the Android team to dive into the inner workings of Android in .NET 6. Jonathan has a unique perspective as a developer. He's not an evangelist. He's working on improving the developer experience for all .NET Android developers, and Maui developers as well, who target the Android platform. An Android deep dive is coming right up on the .NET Show. I'm here with Mr. Jonathan Peppers. Uh, as you can see, he's looking a little down today. He's he's very black. He's dark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> His PowerShell is dark, that's for well, sure. I thought we'd stay at the command line at first, but we'll Yeah. We'll move to Visual Studio. So first of all, uh Jonathan, who are you? Can you tell everybody about yourself? Yeah, so I I work initially I worked on Xamarin Android and which is now you might call it the .NET SDK for Android. And Maui encompasses many platforms, and so one of the things they depend on is Android SDK. Would you call it the Maui team, or are you just on the .NET team? Uh, well, the, the group that works on Maui is really several teams. So okay. you, we have like an iOS team, an Android team, uh, the people who work on the Maui framework, and then we yeah. have like IDE teams. <laughs> so. Right. Okay. I noticed that um, you uh, did some really great work to reduce the size of uh, startup time or reduce the startup time of a of an Android application. First of all, thank you for that. That was very much appreciated. And and second, can you just tell that story because I think it's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Okay. So I. Um... I have focused a lot on performance while I've worked on Xamarin or and now Maui. Yeah. Um, and one thing we saw when profiling is um, a lot of integer values being read and copied at startup. And if you've ever built a Xamarin Android app, uh, there's this concept of you have an Android resource file. Yeah, And the way you, you use it, there's an integer that's like auto-generated and you can access it from your code. However, as, as Android has matured over time, there's been a lot more built-in integers. And these are just integers that get created when you create a new application. They, they're somehow IDs or something, or what are they? Yeah, so like uh, if you wanted the default color of Android text, like a label... Right. Uh, they have an integer for that. I see. Uh, and unfortunately, when you create a class library, um, it brings in all of those. How many did you say there were? <laughs> well, in the example uh, app where I was profiling, there were like 30,000 or something. What? And so I found a workaround to fix Maui so that, you know, we got rid of 30,000 of them. And <laughs> Our long-term goal is to rework how the system works in general so that yeah. um, instead of this this system happening at startup in your app, it would happen at build time. Um, okay. But this is just the way it was implemented like 10 years ago I when see. Xamarin began. And right. you got that 30,000 number down to what? Uh, I was like, in this one method, I think it's like 60-something. <laughs> my memory serves i don't yeah that's a that's a good time right there <laughs> cause for celebration and how much time did you end up shaving off of the startup process so a regular release build of a maui app i think this is maui hello world mm -hmm. i think it saved about 400 milliseconds um yeah that's significant for something <laughs> Something as as weird as this, it, it's a good find. Okay. So uh, I wanted to have you on to, to just sort of catch up with you about um, Maui, about uh, .NET 6, and 
there's a whole bunch of new stuff, and, and it's nice to go right to the horse's mouth to learn about it. Uh, so what do you want to share with us today? Yeah, so I I was on the team where we ported Xamarin to .NET 6. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Which is not, a, I mean, it was a, a large effort from many people. But yeah. Um, so one of the features of .NET, so I've, I've got just .NET 6 installed here. Okay. Um, this came out at .NET Conf like a month ago. Right. Um, and there's a new command called .NET Workload, right? And if you, if you run .NET Workload Search, these are optional pieces of .NET that you can go install in addition to the .NET SDK. Okay, right? so these aren't the installed workloads. These are ones you can install. Yeah, ah. yeah. So I'm already set up, but um, for example, there's a Maui workload that's kind of like the top level install everything for me, right? Right. And give me all the platforms. Um, and do you have to have um, a preview version of .NET in order, in order to get that workload? Or can you just download the regular Visual Studio 2022 and uh, .NET 6 and add that? Yeah, so if you're an IDE person and yeah. you use Visual Studio, all you need to do is uh, make sure that you're getting the preview of Visual Studio 2022, which right. is 17.1 right now. Right now. Um, and then check this mobile development with .NET workload. Yeah. And then this .NET MAUI preview box yeah. is, is literally all you need to do. But it's already checked, I think, isn't it? If you install preview? Yeah. It, if you check the mobile development with .NET, you get MAUI by default. Cool. So the one thing I wanted to talk about here was the Android workload. This is the piece that I work on, my team works on. Yeah. <laughs> um, which you could think of it as Xamarin Android that was ported to .NET 6. Right. right. Yeah. So anything that you could do in the past, like write an Android layout file, right? Mm. And it, it used to be an AXML file or XML file or just access Android APIs. Mm. Um, the logic that builds an app, like all of that lives in this this workload. Yeah. Yeah. Now I notice Android AOT and ahead of time compiling is something that I only associate with Blazor uh, WebAssembly. What's the deal with AOT for Android? Yeah, so if you were a Xamarin developer in the past, you were using AOT and probably didn't know it. Um, okay. So specifically on like iOS, um, the operating system doesn't allow you to execute RAM. And so a thing like a JIT that .NET does by default yeah. doesn't work on iOS. So okay. if you've ever published an iOS app to a device, you're, you're actually using AOT. Okay. Uh, Android, it's nice in that a JIT can work. And so by default, uh, it does the JIT by default. But yeah. if you enable AOT, you can get better performance in your app. Oh, nice. So let's let's maybe show, I wanted to show the template. This is just the regular new project dialog. Mm -hmm. And there's a template here, a project for creating a .NET 6 Android application. Okay. Right. So... This is the same as if you created a Xamarin Android app that was not Xamarin Forms, if you want to think of it that way. Sure. Um, so main activity. Uh, we have updated this template to use the, the nicer namespace thing, but in this this build, that change isn't here yet. Um, but this is everything you're used to if you've ever done Xamarin Android development. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same, except... Uh, we're using a .NET 6 project. Okay. Um, and do you also do the UI with XAML, or is it just XML? Yeah, so the Android has their own XML. Right. Um, I They don't have a name for it other than Android XML. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what it look, looks like. Maybe I could hide, the, uh, hide this pane here. That's probably worse to see. Anyway. Oh, well. Yeah. So you can, 
you can develop the XML and we even have a, a designer where you can kind of preview your changes before running the app. Neat. And this is all the same technology from Xamarin. Right. Um, Again, not Xamarin Forms, but if you were going to do a Xamarin app targeted for Android, this is the kind of thing you'd see. But this is now done at 6 version. Yeah. Got it. So this would be like equivalent on iOS if you were using UIKit APIs to to create a UI. Right. Uh, Things like storyboards or, you know, that's the equivalent of what we're doing here. Gotcha. And by the way, are you running this in a virtual machine? Oh, you mean my Windows? Yeah, your Windows. <laughs> PC? No, this is just regular Windows PC. And I have the Android SDK installed. Mm-hmm. And I open VS and hit the play button. Right? Okay, good. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so this is the, the Android emulator that the Android SDK provides. Okay. And this is like a full, you know, phone yeah and here's our app we ran hello android yeah um so from here i wanted to maybe show some of the internals of an android app that's probably interesting yeah definitely but first let's let's talk about those aot settings we were talking about yeah um so I would recommend turning on AOT, and this is probably the same for Blazor, for release builds. Right. As it takes a bit of time to compile all of your assemblies into, you know, uh, unmanaged code that it can load and run. Around. Sure. Yeah. And so you set that up like this, this run AOT compilation setting. And then Android, we have a second one, which is profiled AOT. Hmm. And what that does is um, it doesn't AOT everything uh, because if it did, the app would be so large that it may not be, it's not really the best trade-off, right? Uh So what this does is it AOTs the startup path, the most common startup path for apps. So you don't pay the cost of jitting things in that all Android apps run at startup. Okay. Yeah. So let's, if I... I've already built this app just so in the uh, interest of time. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the release build. Um, An APK file, if you've ever looked at one, is just a zip file. Okay. So if you want to inspect what's inside here, um, you can can literally use any zip tool you like. Right, right. I like to use 7-zip. And... We can see inside here what you know everything that's going on. Um, I built this app for one architecture, and by def- default, it'll do all four. But we can kind of get an idea of what's inside um, a .NET six Android app. Huh. Uh, so these are native libraries, um, an SO file, which if you've ever maybe built native code on Linux, they use the same SO file extension. Okay. And so these come from the um, from .NET runtime, right? So system IO compression, and then this is actually mono, this, this largest file. Right, um, okay. And then in the assemblies folder is all of your, all the code in your app. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one thing to notice, um, <laughs> there's not many files here, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, the whole uh, base class library in .NET is big. What happened to it, right? Right. Uh, a release build, we we use the trimming that's available in .NET 6. So you may have heard about, it's also called the linker. Yeah. Um, and we used to, in the old days, we called it, we used the linker to stub out things that were not used yeah. Yeah. So it analyzes your app and goes through and removes any code that isn't called yep. and puts a tiny what's left of the base class libraries in your app. Yeah. And so since this app was basically one one Hello class, <laughs> it could get rid of everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. And you get that linking or the trimming 
Well, I've heard linking, trimming, tree shaking, like pick a term. What, which yeah. one is, which one do you use? Trimming? The, they've tended in .NET to use the word trimming now. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it makes sense. It, it, it's very descriptive of what it is. Tree shaking, what the hell is that? And, and linking, <laughs> I generally associate with a linker putting things together, not taking them out. Yeah. So, all right. In, in the Xamarin days, um, it was called the linker. Right. Um, and I don't know why, <laughs> why that term was chosen. But Do you get this trimming feature in all project types in .NET 6 turned on by default for release mode? Um, you do for mobile. Um, so it, let's say you're building a .NET 6 console app. Yeah. Um, if you run .NET Publish, um, there are some settings there that can enable trimming. Um, okay. So when you, you publish a console app, you can put it into a self-contained mode where it would bring a BCL with it so that it, it's completely self-contained and you can literally unzip it on a machine somewhere and run it. Okay, great. Um, so that's the mode in which you'd use the trimmer okay. in a console app. Very good. Um, as an aside, uh, I saw a very enticing demo at .NET Conf of the uh, Windows Android subsystem. And I immediately went to look at how to install that. And I think I got a, you know, a few things deep and said, ah, what's the st status of that? I, I, and, and is that something that people can install today? It didn't, it didn't really look like you could. I, I think you can, yeah. Um, I have it on, not on this machine. This is still a Windows 10 machine. Mm. <laughs> this is my main develop machine, so I've been kind of dragging my feet. Um, yeah, yeah. But on my laptop, I have it working. Um, if you have Windows 11, uh, you can go to the Windows Store and install the Amazon App Store. <laughs> yeah, I tried that. It didn't work. It, it might okay. just be something that I didn't read correctly, but... I, I am now that you say you have it working, and I obviously saw it working at .NET Conf. I'm going to figure that out. And we're going to make that a, a .NET show in the future because yeah. that's really cool. I mean, uh, it's really cool on one hand because you'll be able to just natively run Android applications, but it's also really scary because you'll be able to natively run Android applications, right? <laughs> yeah. So any <laughs> so. Any um, uh, hacks there or malware that happen for Android devices now get their hooks into Windows if you let them. So just another attack vector, but but you know very very cool for you know for the utility that it provides. Yeah, the the way it works is um, so this drop down here. Yeah, it has a list of devices that yep. you can choose from. So if I plugged in a device um, USB, it would show up here. Right. So the same thing happens when you um, start <laughs> uh, the Windows 11 subsystem for Android. Okay. Um, it'll just show up in the drop down. You hit play, and your app should run the same <laughs> as it did. Wow. The only thing that's a little weird is that the uh, it pops up like the shape of a window. So like kind of the same shape as this explore window it would right. be your app so if your app's not made to show that shape uh, it might be a little odd but yeah i get that right it's not a lot of people that have android desktop machines <laughs> right maybe there is a few tablets but it's not as popular as an ipad sure yeah. not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay um, I could maybe show another PR I'm working on and talk about that. Yeah, of course. Um, we want to see the new and shiny. Okay, so this is um, another concept we're working on. Um, in Xamarin Forms, if you've ever looked at the internals, they have a type called Forms View Group. Uh, and it's a Java class they've written, and they've created a binding so that they can call into it from C-sharp, right? Okay. And and it's as simple <laughs> as it seems, but um, they wrote a method where 
you pass in all these values at once and then they do a bunch of logic in Java. Yeah. Uh, and, and what that enables is instead of setting however many, maybe this is eight or 10, instead of crossing from C sharp to Java 10 times, mm -hmm. this crosses over once and, uh, does all the work in Java and then goes back to C sharp. Makes a chunky call rather than a chatty call. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, I want to apply this, this idea to Maui. Mm -hmm. Um, I found a place where I could do maybe 18 and one. And it seems like, uh, from the numbers so far that, you know, it's a good 33% off of every content view wow. that's created and added to the screen. Same with border. Um, and we can apply this idea in more places across Maui. Um, anything where they're doing custom drawing, you know, maybe with a canvas, uh, we could, instead of crossing C sharp to Java several times, maybe we do all the drawing on Java and go back once. Um, yeah. I like that. I, I'm really glad that there are guys like you out there that are just, you know, they get up in the morning and they think, how can I make this more efficient? Cause <laughs> You know, and especially where Xamarin is concerned and, you know, Xamarin and now Maui, because there's so many layers, you know, and yeah. so many moving parts. And that's, that's been the challenge of Xamarin, um, just to get everything in sync and to get everything working. So, so with you guys making this change to .NET 6, now you have the opportunity to go back and really make things uh, run smoothly and efficiently. And I love that. Yeah. And switching from, um, if you're switching from Xamarin to Maui, hmm. um, you're going to get all the improvements they've made to .NET 6 in general, right? right. So like right. all the crazy perf screenshots that you see on Twitter or whatever, you know, all that stuff is in .NET 6. Yeah. And so you can benefit from it in your mobile app as well. So. And uh, it's a good time to say that there isn't anything missing, is there? That if you're a Xamarin developer today and you want to move to Maui, are there going to be things missing that you you are going to miss? Or if there are things missing, are there things that you're going to say, thank God, they're not, <laughs> they're not there anymore. I don't have to do that. Well, I'm sure you could probably find some corner of .NET because Mono is it more, it's more closer to like .NET framework, if you right. want to think of it like that. So there's probably some APIs that are different because it would be like moving a .NET fr from .NET framework to .NET Core or .NET sure. 6. Right. Um, and then on the Xamarin Forms side, um, they should have pretty good compatibility. Like any, any XAML you had before, I think it should generally work with maybe some tweaks. Yeah. Uh, that's their goal anyways. Um, hmm. You might have some more issues if you have a lot of custom renderers. Yeah, uh, that was the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. They, you can bring renderers over. Right. Um, and I think they're working on some documentation on how to migrate and do this. Um, yeah, there's a few things that I saw using the new um, graphics library, for example, where you can get the native the native uh, view and um, apply things the way that the particular platforms want it applied. But generally speaking, there's less of that, the uh, meta tags for um, operating systems that you have to do if Android, then if else if Mac Catalyst or Elif iOS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's another interesting thing is the, uh, in Xamarin Forms, you'd have three projects if you're if you're targeting yeah. iOS, Android, whatever. Right. Um, and now you have one that is multi-targeted. And you don't necessarily have to have all of those platform SDKs installed in order to use the ones that you do have installed. And I love that. Yeah, I love compiling it and not getting you know can't connect to Mac. Well, I didn't ask you to compile the Mac version. I, Ask you to compile the Windows version. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. I love that. Really good. So if you've ever, if you want to see where we work on Xamarin Android and now the Android SDK, mm -hmm. you can go to 
on GitHub, Xamarin, Xamarin Android. And our wiki page has uh, lots of stuff on like what we're working on, right? Okay. Um, so recently we worked a lot on build performance. Um, there's a page we're going to be updating on startup time. Yeah. Um, so this is an initial, um, this shows how we timed it. And we do have some initial numbers to compare Xamarin Forms and, nice. and Maui. Um, these, I need to update this page with the very latest numbers, but I hmm. think we're getting, a, we're getting pretty close now. Um, That's great. It, it's interesting that uh, Microsoft is continuing to use the word Xamarin for, for things that are in .NET 6, um, you know, just behind the scenes. But uh, I guess that's the curse of buzzwords, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and one of the goals uh, on the Android side, at least, is uh, you can use old Xamarin NuGet packages yeah. in .NET 6, and they still work. Right? Yeah. So you could, <laughs> in theory, take a NuGet you've been using since 2012, you know, and it still works in .NET 6. And so, all of .NET is like that. I mean, as long as they're they're compatible and there's no yeah. breaking changes, you can call, you know, .NET Core 3.1 libraries with .NET 6. Yeah. In general. It's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, and eventually, you know, this repo may move, you know, um, I don't know the future. It could be .NET slash Android one day. Yeah. So here's another change we made recently. And this this change is actually coming to Xamarin and .NET 6. Nice. Um, where if if we have something that's not like high and risky, you know, we, we take it to Xamarin as well. Um, okay. And so this is, uh, his name is Merrick uh, on the Android team. But... Um, what we had in the past, as just as you would expect, is we have you know .NET assemblies DLL files mm -hmm. you know, sitting in the app. Mm -hmm. Well, he found that if he merged all the files into a single file that is compressed, mm -hmm. um, we can get better startup time that way. And so, and it it makes it where you can bring in as many NuGet packages as you want, and each new assembly file isn't going to impact startup. <laughs> nice um because we tend to see uh customers they like their NuGet packages um, yeah they do we see like hundreds in, in apps so. <laughs> <laughs> um this also helped maui quite a bit uh because maui has a lot of assemblies mm -hmm. um it brings in like microsoft extensions dependency injection which you're probably f familiar with if you use asp.net oh yeah um so there's just a lot of assemblies there that, you know, this was a, a, a big deal for us to get in. Yeah. yeah. And this is on by default uh, for any release build is our plan for this so far. Love yeah. it. Are you liking the uh, latest C Sharp 10 things and C Sharp 9 and 10 records and width and all that? Yeah, maybe uh, my favorite thing may be implicit global usings. I love uh, it. I, maybe it's controversial, but I'm like, I don't, I don't even want to see using at the no, time. No, yeah, I, if I never have to see another using statement, I agree. When I, <laughs> when I started writing Blazor and they have the underscore imports Razor file, and I'm like, well, that's a great idea. We should do yeah. that in all project types. And why can't I, why don't they move, you know, why don't they uh, translate over to classes in Blazor as well? Yeah. Of course, we know the answer, but uh, now we can do that. Yeah. That's cool. So. It's interesting you not only can you type global using whatever in some C sharp file, but you can actually put it in your project file. Yeah. You can put using include and then put a namespace and then it applies to the whole project. Um, Sweet. So I made sure that Maui had that, right? So yeah. when you create a Maui app, um, you don't have to list all the Maui namespaces in your project. They're just there. Yeah. Right? Um, so that. That's a good change um, from Xamarin Forms. <laughs> you definitely have usings at the top in Xamarin Forms. Hey, I want to ask you a couple of questions while I got you here. And I, and I apologize that this isn't a very visually uh, rich episode, but that's okay. 
Um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, Android emulators and, um, and and the like. I have recently created, yeah, I have recently created a, a VM in Azure, and I have this tool that I purchased that allows you to pass through USB devices from your local machine to a VM with RDP. And so uh, it knows that my Android device is plugged in. I install the Android driver on both the client and the server. And um, I can create a Maui app or a Xamarin app and see it on my local Android phone, even though mm -hmm. I'm, you know. The problem, of course, is that, oh, hot reload timed out. Oh, <laughs> debugging kind of works, but it's yeah. really slow, as you would expect. And uh, I just, I think the idea of developing uh, Maui applications in a VM, uh, in, you know, in a cloud VM, is a really excellent idea. I mean, yeah. just developing code in general in a cloud VM. But um, yeah. there might be some opportunities there for you guys to, um, you know, to make that happen better. So, yeah, to give some background, uh, when you run an Android emulator, uh, it has different, um, I don't know, you might think of it as like a virtualization mode, right? Yeah. It's where, so like, for example, you might have heard of the term Haxm, H-A-X-M. Yes, right? and I know that the Haxm layer uh, is necessary in a VM if you're going to do you use the Android emulator yeah, on so a this, VM. My desktop here is an Intel okay. PC. And so I can just use Haxum and run yeah. the simulator. Now you don't have to install Hyper-V. So if you had an AMD processor, you can't use Haxum, right? Right. <laughs> right. And so we, you know, they made it where you can use Hyper-V as another option. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, when you run a VM in Azure, no Hyper-V. Uh, no, it's using Hyper-V. But you think about it, you're now doing nested virtualization, right? right. So uh, <laughs> it's as slow as it is on your desktop. <laughs> now we're going to add one more layer of yeah. slowness. It's like, yeah, turtles all the way down, right? Turtles <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> um, and we've had this problem ourselves. Uh, so our, our, our CI system for Xamarin Android, we run our emulators on Mac because that's, that's the only option that works right now. Right. Um, so what what needs to happen here is uh, it looks to me anyway. The last I looked at this is there need to be changes in the Android emulator code itself to yeah. be able to make it run on Azure. Um, so I would like for this problem to be solved. Obviously, if if we want to mobile develop in the cloud, you know. Yeah. You know, like GitHub code spaces, right? right. Stuff like that. Uh, then we need to solve this problem. But yeah, job security for you, my friend. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if anyone can do it, you can, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, I love Maui. I love everything that you guys are doing, and it, it makes my uh, it warms my heart to hear that you're working on improvements in efficiency and performance and. Uh, I just can't wait to see the next thing that um, you come up with. Yeah, sounds good. All right, thanks a lot, Jonathan. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.